Hello everybody! Do, 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 do. Welcome to another video. While I wait for you guys to actually get on the stream, I just want to start drawing a little bit and you will eventually see some people join our stream. How are you guys doing today? Now we have five people on the chat. Whoop, whoop. So, as always, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit of what we talked about last time. Last time on our stream, which is on YouTube now, you guys can find how we went from identifying line quality and from sketchy to clean and what that does for your drawing. We went for a spooky theme and as you draw more lines in an object, it gets more spooky. We gave examples, we drew a lot of eyes, and we drew a lot of ways to draw the faces and structure them. Uh, little semblances between body parts, we drew women, heads, and we talked a lot about the jaw. How you properly draw the face and how it's constructed. We also played a little bit with line quality as well. As you can see, clean line work gives you a nice cute drawing, messy line work, and sketchy gives you a creepy look. This morning I was also talking to my apprentice about perspective and we, I was giving her exercises to do. So, now, what should we draw today? You guys, as always, have the option to be leaving comments and questions and I encourage that because normally the people that come in early to the stream are the people that get a chance to actually choose what we're going to draw. So what should we draw? Robots! Okay, we can do robots. We can totally do robots. So, the difference between robots and humans is the fact that they have robotic parts and metallic parts and rivets and little details like that. So, in order to make a character, let's say this guy, into a robot, all we gotta do is start creating mechanical shapes within our character. So we have the basic structure of a human, in this case a basic structure of a very buff human, and we're gonna make this guy into like Colossus or something like that, okay? Let's find our ears. Our ears are coming exactly from when the top of our neck is, or the neck comes out of the bottom of the ears. So let's give him an ear. Now we gotta make it a mechanical ear. So we got to give it nice hard edges, a surface, and then show that it's actually like metal. Okay. Then we move on to the temples. And the temples in all the geometric shapes would actually be very accentuated when it comes down to a metal surface. So depending on what you want to do with your character, you would have really sharp edges followed by a little bit of shadows. Uh, I'm going to go with the same mask method, but in this case, I'm going to make my eyes into one big visor because I want it to be like a cyborg, right? So instead of having two eyes, I'm just going to draw one big shape within my mask, give myself negative space to make it look like he has like a cyclops visor. And I'm going to use my mask to create that because it already maps out exactly where I want those features of the eyes. Right? The edge right here, depending on how it is, it would still have a little bit of a lip. So I'm gonna darken the line right here on the bottom to give an indication of negative space so that it looks like it's receding more into the face. I'm going to create some details outside to give this depth as well. And I'm going to start determining what kind of volume this is going to have. I want it to be round, so I'm going to give it slightly rounder edges. I want it to look round. Now, from here, jaws and stuff like that normally get separated in a robot from the top of the skeleton, and then they have to pivot over a certain area. So in this case, let's make this top part into one big section. And then the jaw is going to come out 
from here gonna be nice and sharp because it is a robot and it has no fat or like you know fatty tissue it doesn't have soft tissue to be able to you know to have draped so it's going to be nice and sharp lines I'm going to find geometric shapes to fit with where the spheres and all those basic things that would do would go I'm going to now draw nice geometric shapes like if you were drawing just basic structures So now we have a visor, we have our jaw, we can draw the rest of our cyborg. We can make it look a little bit human, I guess. Uh, and negative space. All right. Let's give some more edges. Maybe some indications of wear and tear. He seems like a battle robot. So we're going to give some scratches. Define the side of the goggles. And for the top of the head, let's see, what should we do? I'm just going to give it some lines that like a racing stripe that goes around the shape of her head, right? If I was looking at the back of this, it would be going around the shape. And that's how you get the curvature to look right. You just draw through your shape and then just draw the lines you need. That side over here. Uh, let's give it some rivets. And then we can draw the neck. The neck, since it's going to be a very movable area, it could be cables. Going around the shape as well. Right. So these could be just cables going into our character. If you guys want to understand how to draw the neck a little bit better, I have made a video on this specifically. So go, it's on YouTube, as well as most of the videos that I create. So you guys can always go look at free resources there. It's absolutely free, and like I think it would help a lot of people understand that section of the body better. Okay, so once we have the neck, the neck has to connect to something, right? So he's a robot, so maybe he has like armor. So maybe these parts right here, which would be like the trap muscles. Maybe they just have like a wiring look of sorts connected to a chest piece. The chest piece is as well going to be very geometric. So I like keeping things boxy for robots. Just mostly because it's easy to subdivide a box really easy. But you can just as easy make soft round surfaces like Eva or Baymax and still have like really, really cool features. So it doesn't have to be boxy to be a robot. But in my case right now, I, I like it. Okay, so we have our shoulders, which connect to the middle of where our collarbone would be. So that's normally where you would draw a shoulder shape. The pectoral muscles tend to come from the bottom of the armpit, and you know, and then they wrap around your rib cage, around. So they have a little bit of roundness. So it's not just flat boxes. I'm creating a divot here for the bottom of the pectoral so that we can draw the abs. This is also going to indicate roughly the middle section with the rib cage, right? If you drew a rib cage, that would be right there. So that little divot is the little divot that we draw for a rib cage. We will decide on our arms in a second. Haven't decided that yet. So, but I want to give this area depth. No, I'm not going to interrupt my lesson to put you live just so you can annoy the hell out of me and not ask a good question, okay? 
I'm sorry, every single time, I don't mean to be rude or mean, but every single time that anybody ever goes and asks to be on live, you guys just waste my time. And I'm trying to teach. I'm not trying to, you know, just be popular here. I'm trying to help you guys. I don't have much time every day. So the time that I do have, you know, from working on projects, I'm deciding to spend it with you. So please don't interrupt the class. I'm like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just trying to be very direct with you guys. Okay, so once we have this and we want to give this more depth to make it look like it's standing out, we add perspective points. So, okay, how thick do we want this breastplate to be? Since we're looking at it slightly from the bottom, uh, you can add the depth to the bottom. All right? Add depth to your shape, and now you have a protruding breastplate. You can emphasize this by creating some lines going and changing direction into those areas. So you go down your surface and down the opposite direction, or not opposite, but following the path of how your shape goes into the rest. And it gives you the illusion, even more of an illusion of uh, depth. Okay, here, maybe we can give them like a little like opening right here. So to create a hole inside of him, we're going to play with negative space. First, we got to figure out the perspective of what this hole is going to be doing. Because depending on how we draw it, it's going to look like it's either angled up, angled down, or straight forward. If we draw an inner circle up here, it's going to look like something is shining down, like a spotlight. If we draw it in the middle, it's going to look something like an arc reactor. And if we draw it on the bottom, it's going to look like something shining to the top. So I want it right here. And then all this space that gets created, just create little lines to create negative space. So it looks like it's sinking into the body. At this step, since I chose this perspective, I'm going to add a little bit of thickness to the lines right on this side of the inner side to even add another level of depth. And I can increase this and even sink it even deeper into that little hole that I just drew. Okay? And we're going to draw a little heart. Right going to enhance that by giving it like a little tiny rim. Okay? And then we'll enhance this with color once we go into the color. Uh, I like branding my characters so i'm going to give this guy a panda scout if you guys have never seen the panda scouts um it's like the, the pinups that i draw it's uh like imagine sailor moon meets um sci-fi and that's my panda scout squad i'll have to come up with a story for them at some point i i'm an in this case, I'm identifying the top of the shoulder, top of the shoulder. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add one line going down the side of the neck just to give it even more robotic features. And then let's add some watercolor now so you guys understand a little bit more about what's going on. And then we will adjust back to the other stuff. Now let me just find my watercolor brush. I can't find it. I have water right here. So whenever I have materials that I like, I just have extras all over the place. So oh, I thought I had my watercolors here too. I'm just losing everything. Okay, so we have our watercolors. This is just a cheap $1 watercolor set. This is not an expensive tool. Okay? You don't need expensive tools to sketch. Uh, let's grab a brush. Uh, let's find one that's a little bit bigger. Maybe one that's not all crusty. Alright, we'll go with this one. Uh, I'm just going to grab some water. The water is kind of dirty. But it doesn't matter. It's just a sketch. It's, this is not a finished piece of art. 
So I'm not too concerned with absolutely any of those details. Uh, let's see. Let's make them um, orange. Orange sounds good. So we're going to mix in a little bit of orange. And the way that watercolor works with pen is very, very nice because it doesn't smudge. It doesn't do anything. So you can just draw over your lines and it will not affect them. It won't bleed. It won't like create like weird like bleedy parts. It won't ruin your artwork. So that's why I like ballpoint pen and I like watercolor or highlighters. I like nice simple tools because I can find them anywhere. If I go somewhere and I forget my sketchbook, I can just go into the dollar store and get you know some a watercolor set, some ballpoint pens, and a sketchbook for three bucks. And that's all I need to do to create. So I know that I'm never going to be without my favorite tools. He's an Instagram. You can ask him there. Just curious. Do you ever upload your completed artworks? Yeah, I do. I used to. I used to upload only exclusively finished artworks, but it wasn't until I stopped doing that and I just started posting sketches. That's when I got uh, noticed. So I realized very quickly that people enjoy seeing artwork like that. They enjoy seeing finished pieces of art, but they fucking love watching your progress. Okay? They might like what your finished artwork looks like, but you know the reason that people like seeing sketches so much? It's because they can see themselves doing it. Right? If they see you drawing a sketch, then they're like, oh, that's how he did it. Oh, I can so do that. As opposed to when you show a finished piece of artwork that's all magnificent, people will be like, God damn, that's amazing. Oh, I can't do that. I don't even know how to, do, how to get there. So people will lose interest on, on that much easier, regardless if it's a magnificent piece of artwork. So that is the, you know, the thing. Like some people get really noticed for their finished artwork and that's awesome. So, you know, keep doing that. That's awesome. Whatever it is that gives you that notoriety, don't stop doing it. Everybody's experience is different too. Maybe my like my work is just too clean whenever I like clean it up. So it's very like unappealing for that reason it looks professional therefore the people that watch it and me posting it they're like oh i can't do that oh but it's really cool though he's fucking awesome but i can't do that so i do post my finished sketches but more often than not i just don't care so much about showing them because people just don't care about that not from not from my perspective, not from my point of view. Like that has not been my my experience so far at least. But it's very different, you know. You get people like, you know, Lowish and you get a people like, you know, Derek Lofman that can get away with doing both and actually do very well. So it's really um Honestly, like as much as I don't want and I, I don't like saying it like this, it's a lot based on luck. You know, it's like if people react well to what you like to do, then that's amazing. So you're able to draw that a lot better, a lot more often. So it just makes you better at that one thing. If you're not able to do and draw the things and create the things that you like for a living, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to be happy and proud of what you're doing. So I always encourage people to try to find, uh, you know, paths that you like. Like something that's going to be enjoyable. And we killed another pen. Woo woo. Give me a little heart. We emptied the pen. That's why it wouldn't work. It's literally like running on fumes. There's literally like nothing. Boom. We killed the pen. Whoop whoop. Dead pen. Ah ha ha ha. Okay, on to the next pen. Give it our little grip. These are yellow. These are like 
free pens that I got from an event that I like attended. Free big pens. It's exactly the same as this. It's a cheap, generic pen. Nothing special about it. Okay? I like to emphasize that because people always ask, like, oh, what what did you use? What what is that? What blah 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 blah. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's just a pen. You can steal it from the bank if you want. Yeah. All right, let's move down the torso a little bit more in our robot. So as you can see, we are replicating a lot of normal basic anatomy, but we are making it a little bit more robotic by doing sharp edges, flat surfaces, indents, and overall creating the illusion of something that's not necessarily organic. As we, but we are using the structure of a real thing, you know, that like a real human anatomy to be able to create these objects a lot cooler. So now that we are moving down, we have our rib cage, which would house our lat muscles, which attach roughly at the side of our body. They wrap around a little bit because they wrap around your rib cage. So I like doing little lines like that. I still don't know what I want to do with that, but I know that's my rib cage, and my abs are going to be coming out of here. A very nifty trick to keep, uh, to figure out where you want your hips is to take the bottom of your rib cage, the little endpoints, and then start drawing lines down until you figure out roughly where your crotch wants to be, and then give it underwear. Maybe that's a little bit too low. Let's make them a little bit wider. There you go. That looks all right. You connect the hip bone area to the rest of the rib cage. And now you have a perfectly sized area for your legs. You already have your abs because you already mapped them out. You have your side muscles. And you're ready to go on to the bottom of the body without really doing much. From these two points, drag down, figure out where you want your you know, torso to be, and then give it the width that you want. Maybe if I wanted super wide hips, I'd just make this shape really wide. Right? And then I'd have a much wider character. And we're going to leave them wide just to show that, you know, that can work just as well. You can make it narrow, you can make it wide. Oh, what should we call him? What should we call him? We called the other one Tom. We called our like our elephant that we drew over here. Where is he? We we drew Tom as a draw it in yourself, like draw it in your own style challenge. And what should we call Beef Master what? The Beefmaster 5000. Rodbot. Ooh, Rodbot sounds cool. But Mr. Banana. I like Beefmaster 500, honestly. So it'll be BF500. And it's going to look like someone tagged it on him. But what is it first, then the name will come to mind. Beef Master. Okay, the one thing you got to keep in mind as well when you're going back into your watercolor after you like ink it is that it's not going to lay the lines down as easy as before because it has the texture of the watercolor. So you got to make sure I have these drawing mats, which are essentially like just like a mouse pad. And then I just clean my pens on that. Like my pens, my watercolors, I just constantly rub it on that so that I don't get those blobby parts. And that's why I love having these things. I'm going to come up, I'm going to uh, come up with some really cool ones that have like anatomy lessons. And then people will be able to have those for their drawing area so they have reference all the time. So I'm going to be doing that at some point uh, in the next couple of months. Okay. 
any tips for beginners? Everything I'm doing is for beginners. You guys are like, you know, if you guys can follow along and draw, and then you guys will learn a lot. All right, so we're gonna segment our rib cage first. I'm creating the bottom part of the rib cage, and I'm going to attach these lat muscles that go around it. And we haven't drawn our arms, so I'm not drawing it all the way to the top because we still need space for our arms. Okay, so that's wrapping around. Boom, 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 boom. Again, we just give it some organic cable looking, you know, looks. Let's follow the edges of the rib cage so we can find a point and then create a little bit more depth like that. This big breast muscle plate would create a shadow onto the bottom part, so we would just enhance the line work there to create that shadow. And these muscles right here wrap around into the ribcage, so these would create a slight shadow as well. Okay, I'm gonna give this ribcage depth by adding a little bit of width to the inside part of the ribcage. So I still want it to look robotic. And then we're going to work in our side muscles and our abs. Now, it's a robot, so it, it has no absolute need for a six-pack, okay? It just doesn't. It'd be dumb. So we're going to come up with our hip bone and how we want it to connect to our hip bone. I personally like giving my robots a big belt. I don't know why. I just like giving my robots a big fat belt. I wrap the belt around them, and then I build it out. I think I'm just stuck in like a Batman, like kids, like era where like every single superhero and like everything had a big belt or a utility something, and I've always liked it. And it just helps you map out the character a little bit more. So now that we have our basic belt, we haven't added any detail to this, just a buckle and the side you know, things. Now we know where we can bring in onto our hip bones in our side muscles. Okay. So now we know it has to go there. This hip bone is going to accentuate where the abs go. So we're just going to map out the area just so there's like a distinction between the sides and the middle. Now here you can do whatever you want. If you do want to replicate abs, it would just be as simple as creating angled Nike signs like a Nike symbol and you would create little Nike symbols until you create as many abs as you want okay the Nike symbol is essentially this shape right here it's just a shape and you're making the bottom ledge the bottom edge of it you are like rounding it out like a piece of corn but you're not doing it too much, you're just doing it slightly so it creates the indication and the visual aspect of a ab muscle. And then you just reverse it for the other side. Okay. Gonna add some negative space here so it doesn't look like actual muscle. We'll have it extend to the edges. Okay. Now these sides right here are also movable, kind of like the neck, right? So I got to make sure that it looks like they could be moving. So now the neck moves a little bit different than those. So I'm going to create lines going like this so that it looks like an accordion because that just makes more sense to me that it would actually be able to bend in this direction. And again, I'm drawing through the shape. I'm going from this side. I'm thinking how it's going to look on the other side. So it creates a very slight and almost impossible to the, like, detect curvature right here. But your eye actually notices that. And sometimes you won't see that happening. And you'll just think, oh, something's slightly off. What's off about this? Like, it'll be 
the fact that people just draw straight lines instead of curving it at the end is because they don't visualize it going through the shape. All right, so now we get to color this area with our watercolors. Uh, not these watercolors, let's use this one. And if I can find the brush again, because I think I lost the brush. I swear to God, I have not moved out of this spot. How can I lose everything? Ah. Okay, we have our water. Ah, we have another brush, because now I lost the other brush too. And we were doing orange, so let's go with orange. Now, when I'm drawing things like this as well, let's see if this actually works, because this brush is horrible. Ugh, it's all crusty. Whenever I'm drawing things and I want to make sure that things pop out, I focus heavily on making sure that two areas are not the same color. So, for example, here I left this white so that I could add color to this part and make it pop out. Right? So now by adding color here, this area right here not having that color makes this upper area pop. This area having color makes this area with no color pop. Adding color to the outside wherever I want white makes that area pop. Okay? But you wouldn't want to put that same tone next to this one because then it would just muddy it. It just doesn't look right. So in this case, we have this, this, so maybe we can do alternating colors on the side. And still create that illusion. Okay, you can add little details if you want. Let's give him some some color and like stuff to his abs. He's a robot, but that doesn't mean that he can't be fashionable. Okay, so there you go. Let's just give him like again some battle scars. And with little light cross hatching, you can just add a little bit of dint dance and stuff like that all over the place. Give him an I uh, give him his own story, you know. If he's a robot, that he be like is a robot wars. Um, okay, Miss T. Yeah, what? I love that you gave him ears. I think it oh, it's just big round stick pens. Like you can find these at any convenience store in pretty much every country. Like, they, Bic is just a standard, like, all over. So, it's like, well, they're super cheap. But I find that even though they're cheap, they're, their ink just does not, like, punch up. So, you know, like, they did something right. And I've gone through every goddamn pen out there. Like, I was on the search, man. I was on the, like, search for the perfect pen. And, you know, I always thought that I'd even... I've bought even, like, $150 pens. I bought a $150 pen, and I hated it. It was so horrible to draw with. It was just... Ugh. I felt so dumb, because then I just started drawing with my, like, little, like, big pens again. And I felt happy. And I have, I, I think I lost that pen. I have no idea where that went. Like, I could care less, too, because it was just a super expensive, very shitty pen. And, you know, I've noticed that a lot of people buy stupidly shitty crap that's expensive because they just think that that's going to make them look richer or, like, something. And it's, just like, it's such a dumb way of thinking. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with the arm. If this is our shoulder, obviously our arm is going to be coming from there. So we're going to extend it here. If you're ever wondering where your like arm bends, it's normally around where the belly button would be. So if you extend your arm and you just create an arc to where your belly button would be, 
That's roughly where your elbow is. Okay? And then from there, if you want to draw structurally sound arms, the, the length of your palm from the palm to your elbow is the same distance as your elbow to your shoulder. So that's roughly the same sizing that you require. And then your fingers are on top of that. So we got to figure out what we want to do with the hand first. In this case, we are going to want them holding something up, like a waiter or something. Okay. So we're going to have that. If we hold our hand up like that, that means... Like, if I try to replicate that pose, I know that my thumb is pointing towards the back of my head. So, therefore, my pinky is in the front side. So, I'm just going to map out really quick hands, and we will stylize them into robot hands later. And then my thumb would be over here. Okay? We come up with a very basic shapes for our arm and elbow. We know our elbow is right here, so that's the pointy part of our arm. And then we find our bicep from our shoulder down to our elbow. And then we find the bottom of our arm. The skin between your arm right here and your bicep tend to squish whenever you actually bend your arm like that. So we're going to create uh, make sure not necessarily this one overlapping or this one overlapping, but it's going to be kind of squished together. Okay. Then from there, we are going to add robotic elements to this. So robots tend to pivot on, you know, like little tiny hinges and stuff. So let's make a hinge. So we're going to draw this side of the arm, this side of the arm, and we're going to make this into like a little hinge. That's going to pivot around that little axis. Right. If you guys are ever wondering how to draw this, like the overlapping shapes here, it goes shoulder, chest, arms, back. Shoulders, chest, arm, back. Shoulders, chest, arm, back. Okay? Shoulders go first. Chest goes second. Arms go third. Chest goes last. And that's how you get that overlap perfectly. Okay. No, no, no. We haven't finished them yet. We can add girth to him. So he's going to have his bicep. He's going to have his bicep going around. So I'm going to draw it going around the shape. Again, the bottom of the arm is going to go around the shape. So we draw the lines going like that. This top part, let's keep it with like cables and stuff. So we're going to end the shape right there. And then it's going to add some cables with negative space. Okay. Be a little darker because it would create shadows. And then let's give them like mega forms. So, but the basic structure is here, right? And it's supposed to be coming out of this hinge right here. So from there, we can add the arm coming out this way. And then we can wrap this around with, I don't know, like arm guards or like, you know, like Mega Man arm thingies or thrusters or whatever you want. Or even just eliminate that bottom part and just create a super mega hand. It's like armor and stuff. Right? Sometimes you can just go crazy and just have fun. Create an opening for the wrist. Create the pivot for the wrist. Identify the sides of your element, in this case one side and then we can go into our hand okay our hand is going to have the bone that takes you to the palm which is this bone right here 
Like, not a bone, but that little tiny, like, thing that sticks out. Right, there you go. This one? I used to like that, to use that as a landmark. Okay? So that's a landmark that I like to map out right here in the front. Because that connects to the fleshy parts at the top of your hand. So you can just draw those as, like, those fleshy parts on top. And then from there, this finger is going to come this way. Let's make it a little bit more boxy so it looks more robotic and we'll give little segments like that connect have the squishy part of our hand this is where our rest would go so maybe this would be like a cable our hand has depth it's not just a little beanbag shape so it has a side as well right but that side connects to the bottom, little finger So that side is going to have a definite side to it. Now, whatever he's holding is going to block a lot of the fingers. So we got to draw whatever he's holding. In this case, what do we want? Maybe something that's all the way out here to his thumb and to there. Now, I'm not keeping these out of the loop. I'm not trying to hide them, as you can see. But sometimes you just don't see that aspect of the drawing. So don't if you can't see it, don't force it. You don't need to force it. Okay? But ideally, you want like positions and drawings that you can see what you're actually trying to convey. When you hide like arms or legs because you don't know how to draw them in a certain way, you're kind of cheating yourself. Just go and watch reference and try to do it again. Okay, so this guy is going to be a cute and adorable creature. Okay. There you go. Have a little pen. Okay, so now he's holding. Okay, Mr. Loch Ness. What is it? Loch Ness what? Loch Ness Frackenunion. Bro just ignored all his comments. You you do understand that I'm drawing, right? You understand that I'm drawing at the same time as talking and trying to instruct and do things. I don't always look at the comments because I can't. I don't have an extra set of eyes. Why do people get so upset when they don't get that, like, comments? When I do see them, that's cool. And then I get to answer your questions. That's awesome. If I don't see it, just, it's fine. Just go along with it. There's nothing wrong here. I'm not trying to ignore anybody. I'm just trying to focus on teaching. All right. So we're going to define again the sides of our character's elements with our colors. And make sure that everything is popping as it should. Okay. By adding contrast, this is going to be a lot easier. Any part that is touching that is the same color, try to change the color so that it looks cooler, so that it stands out. My Brad bro comment. Dude, you're not upsetting me. It's just annoying. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have anything positive to comment, just shut up. Because that that just ruins it for everybody else. Understood? Or you can just leave the stream, honestly. Like no one's forcing you to be here. Beep, 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 beep.
Okay, so as we go down the body, now we get to the legs. All right. So the legs for robots are going to be really fun. Most of the time, I like giving my robots, like, wheels and shit like that for, like, their legs. So in this case, I'm going to do that. We're going to use a basic structure of what we would draw legs like, and then we're going to come up with a ve like a vehicle type of uh, system. So if we had our hip bones, which we already mapped out, right, our hip bones, our legs are going to come out of here. I don't care. <laughs> don't be negative. That's it. I don't care if you meant it as a joke. It annoys me. Okay, so we have our hips, we have our crotch, and then our legs would technically come from here. So our bones for our thighs tend to go out of our hip bone and then back inside depending on how inside is depending on how cross your legs are, how closed, and stuff like that. So for normal legs, you'd probably have something like this, right? Your legs would come out in an angle like that and then create the whole, like, thigh. That would be the way that you do it. But now, since we have to make a robot out of this, I'm going to take this same structure of lines bring it down into a perspective so I'm going to create a horizon line right now so I can ground my character horizon is going to be right there and I want the surface to be right here so my surface or whatever is going to be right here we can set a perspective point and we can start mapping out how it would fall into the bottom perspective okay and we're going to do this grid so that we have a floor. Okay. So now our character is grounded. Okay. Now we got to come up with that. Let's make a wheel. How about that? Let's make like a big tire. So I'm going to, it's going to be sideways. And I want that to be the initial shape. I map it out. I understand that it's going to be going this way. So all my lines for my tire are going to be going like that. I create the bottom. I can darken a little bit in the back just to create a little bit of an indication of a shadow. Just to ground it again. And you can start drawing your tire. Now this has to connect to the tire. so. The tires normally connect at the sides. Inside, there's an axle. If you're like a bicycle nerd, you'd understand that we have, you know, axles on both sides when it comes down to something in, with a wheel in the middle. So we have a two axles, and this is where these bones are going to connect to. We can connect it with like a big chassis, like, you know, our wheel enclosed in like a little section. But this guy looks like an off roading type of guy. So I'm going to make um, his legs come out here, and they're going to just hook in at an angle. I'm going to give him some suspension because he would need a little bit of like shock absorption, and I can imagine that that would be something around here. I'm going to create two cylinders, and I'm going to map them into perspective, make sure that it's into that same one point perspective. It's gonna help me subdividing my shape so that I can create details within it. And I create the other one on the other side. Horizon line in a cylinder. Horizon line means a flat point and then from each point up and down, it goes like that. Okay, so now that we have our little shock absorption area, this would just, you have to figure out a way to connect this part into a single axle. So we will create like a link. And then we just have to figure out a way to connect these two together that makes it look cool. And then how to enclose this upper part as well. Let's see. Now this upper part, you don't have to leave it like underwear. It could literally be just like 
a body. But let's see. Okay, so from here to here, we have to have a connection point into the hips. Because that's where the shock absorption is. So I'm going to draw connection going into the shock absorption. This can be our connection point to our belt. Now from here, we can build out this side of the body and then create the middle part. And then from here, we can really stylize it any way we want. So we can make it like a loincloth type of thing and then just connect that. Why not? That looks okay. give it depth by giving it sides at wherever there's a crevice. Like any time that the direction changes, you can add a little bit of depth by creating elements like that. That's gonna connect there, it's gonna connect there. This also should have depth, so it's gonna have a front and a back. So if this curved back and it went back into the shape, it would end up being a bunch of negative space, right? because that's in the back. Again, we gotta give depth to the plates. If it's going to be metal, it's going to have depth. And we're looking at these things from a little bit from underneath. So these would have a little bit of depth and maybe even an indication of an edge at the top. If they're shiny, even more so. Um, that have the tire, we have that. Now we just gotta build the shocks. How shocks tend to work in my like very limited experience dealing with shocks is that this upper part right here has a spring or it has air and it sinks into the bottom part. And then the air, whatever is here, it pushes back up or a spring, could be a spring or air. When this goes down, you tend to push back up because of that pressure. So let's draw that out. Two cylinders, one slightly smaller than the other. Okay. There you go. And then you know, you can just give it a little bit of cross hatching just to distinguish both sides. Add whatever details you want. Little stickers, little like gauges, little indents. Just make sure you draw on both sides so that it looks nice. From here, it would have maybe like a pivoting rod. into another pivoting rod, connecting into two connectors. Now you can make this all beefier and stuff like that if you wanted to, you know, you can add, you can take away, you know, this is probably not the most like stable system. Uh, like, I don't know how this would actually stand up with like the shocks being this tiny compared to his body, but that's perfectly fine. It's just a concept, you know? We're just having fun. And now let's add a little bit of detail to the tire. So tires have sidewalls. So I like to start with the sidewall. And sometimes the sidewalls have little details. So as you contour around your shape, you can always add these little bumps that you have on your sidewall sometimes. Then it goes into where the rim is. So this has a little bit of depth as well when you see it on the side. Okay. Now these little bumps are going to create ridges. And these little bumps create ridges that look like eyebrow lines. They kind of look like eyebrows going down. And they just alternate. If you think about it as angry eyebrows, it's very easy to draw tires. 
angry alternating eyebrows. Now you have like a big off-roading tire. If you, you can remember what we did with the abs, we just added a little bit of a darker line because we wanted to create a shape like this. We're going to do the same thing with the tires. Just the bottom part, we're going to thicken it up a little bit to create a little tiny extra depth. Just make sure you don't do it on the top like I did here because then it throws it off and it throws off the illusion. Okay. That should leave you with little overlapping lines right here because of the other side, the little bumps. And then you can always fill in the negative space if you want to even make it pop even more. Yeah, like a big monster truck tire. There you go. Okay, now let's add some color again. And I think our robot will be done. All right, we have our... Did I lose my brush again? Jesus Christ. I keep on, like, misplacing things all the time. Okay, so we have our... Another brush now. It's like our fourth brush that we go through. I'm going to get up and like all of them are going to fall out of my pants or something. Okay, so we have orange. So we can't draw orange right next to orange, but we can possibly draw orange on the bottom of this section and create like a stripe. Remember, robots can be painted any way you want, so. Wow. It looks like it has a skirt now, which is perfectly okay. Give the back part a little bit of shadow too, and then the shocks. In any area that has white, you can just put a little color on the outside of it, and it's going to make that part pop out. <coughs> and so I think orange, orange. And then with the tire, I'm going to do something. Let's, let's try to make it look dirty. So I'm going to just add blotches of orange. Not even, not like consistent. We're just gonna rub it in there randomly, sparingly fading towards the top, and then adding a little bit of dirt on each one of the ridges. Because the little ridges would be the part that catch all the grime. So all these would be dirty. Nice and messy. Okay. Now it looks like he's like revving and like if you draw like circular smudge marks like going around the tire, it'll look like he's just revving the engine like All right. So now he can what if he could retract the wheel for jet setting? Oh, well, maybe that's where that goes in. It's like, floop. And then he just flies from here. Whee! But robots don't have to be that complex either. Like, robots can be incredibly simple. As long as you have a basic shape. And you map it out. As long as you learn how to subdivide things into individual sections, you can draw any kind of robot you want because literally robots are just geometric shapes in perspective. That's all a robot is with negative space, with, you know, cuts into it. 
And then you can just draw robots very easy. without really requiring much information. They resemble a lot of human anatomy and you can make random shapes into robots or you can just make them more anatomically structured. It's a, uh, it really is, there's no wrong way to go about it. Robots and aliens are kind of like that subjective thing. Like you can draw them any way you want and essentially you're not technically wrong because they really don't exist. Like, well, robots exist, but you know, like what a robot is, it's very subjective. But if you're trying to learn how to draw robots and you don't know how to draw in perspective, good luck. Like perspective is absolutely necessary in everything you draw if you want to actually understand what you're drawing. Now, you don't have to understand what you're drawing to be a good artist. You don't. You just have to be able to represent it really, really cool. Like you don't have to learn perspective to be successful. But there is going to be a limit to how much you can succeed or how much you can grow without learning basic, basic elements of, you know, composition, art, perspective, color, and anatomy. Like, you need to have those elements in order to be able to unlock all the things that you really can do with your potential. Robo Homer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did. All right. So it seems like you have been on here for roughly about an hour now. So we are going to call it a day for today. Let's recap a little bit of what we learned. We just learned a little bit more about how to map out geometrically the body, how to make robots with human anatomy, and also just the basic elements of how a human anatomy would be translated to a robot type of style. These, again, are not a measure of teaching you how to draw a certain way. I'm not teaching you a style. I'm teaching you a process. The process will teach you how to draw this in any style you want. When you just learn a style, you're not learning and understanding what you're drawing. You're learning how to break the anatomy, and the style is what comes out from that visualization of knowing how to draw it and then breaking the rules to create your own thing. Okay? I do have something that I want to announce. I am making these really cute little one-off sketches. These are for auction on my Instagram. I post them once in a while and they start off at $20 for the bidding. Free shipping. So if I am trying to get new equipment and I don't really like pushing things on people, but I don't normally sell my sketches either. So if you ever wanted to actually get something original from me that nobody else is going to have, that's a way to do it. So that's a fun way that you guys can support. I also have two books or sale, Coffee Break Doodles Volume 1, and I'll show it to you guys in a second. Ah, where is it? Oh, here it is. Coffee Break Doodles Number 1. I have this book for sale. It's uh, 25 bucks, and you guys get a lot of really fun, interactive things, and you guys will learn a little bit more about this, okay? So they, I have it as an ebook for five bucks, or I have it as a printed book for twenty-five. 
I also have Pinup's book, which is a big book of awesome, sexy ladies like Velma right here. And that's also on sale as an ebook. And the sales from that are going to fund the printing of it with extra, like 50 extra pages. So it's going to be amazing. Thank you all so much. If you guys did get something from this lesson, make sure to click a little heart right there. Show me you love me. Show me that you guys enjoy this. Make sure to share it, comment, go see it on YouTube later on if you guys missed a little bit and you guys want to see it again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Fantastic. What is it? Friday. So enjoy your weekends, peeps. You guys are amazing. I love you all. We will draw tonight most likely on TikTok at midnight. So if you guys are up and you guys want to draw with me again, we will probably draw some more some more robots probably because we want to fill this whole page with robots. So See you guys then. If not, catch it on YouTube later. Always on YouTube. Go subscribe. Help me out. I want to get to that 100,000 subscribers. Help me out if you can. If not, don't worry. I love you all anyways. Bye-bye.